so here we go blitz um let's let's do it we're black against a 2060 opponent Sicilian, Nidorf, the Opusensky, not an opening I enjoy playing against. This is all, all theory. Um, H3, uh, I wonder if I want to play B5 right away. No, b5 is a mistake because of this, but I can take, I can take here on e, I can take here. Okay, we will try it, b5. Um, oh, he plays instantly, which scares me. He wants me to go here so he can pop in to here. I think that's what he wants. So I'm going to play bishop e6, which could be dangerous because I'm, this, this rook is getting, lonely and nervous, but I'm going to castle maybe knight bd7 to c5. No, queen c7 might be the better choice here. Ooh, this could hurt too, but yeah, queen c7 first. I, I might just secure this pawn first and then do I want to go to c6 or knight bd7 to c5? Because yeah, he's gonna he's gonna come in here. Um, yeah, it's, do I want to go knight c six or knight b d seven? Okay, knight b d seven. We're gonna try to pop into c six. Okay. I could bring that bishop back, but you know what? I'm going to, uh, yeah, I don't mind. Like this, the e6 pawn can it, it get weak, but at the same time, it's a weakness and a strength because it strengthens these weak squares for us. So I think, can I play d5 now? Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, no. So I'm gonna double up first and then I can push d5. Oh, that's scary. I might take and then bishop f8. No, my knight falls. I think I'm obliged to take, though. <clears throat> take and then knight, knight h7. I think I have to take that. Oh, he's going to grab this. No, he can't. So I'm going to play knight h7. And I'm threatening bishop g5, or I was. Oh, yeah, I'll just take that to start. And then bishop g5 is a threat. Oh, he's got, he's got to check you, but then I've got, I've got rook here. Oh, his bishop's, oh, he's hitting this twice. Damn, <clears throat> excuse me. Hitting that twice. Okay, I gotta I gotta play quicker anyway, so but uh if he goes bishop here, I might just go here with my king right away. Because he's got two pieces hanging there. His queen and his bishop. And um if he wants he's gonna have to go here, which he does. And Ooh. Okay, let's be patient here. Be a little bit patient. Is white threatening anything? He's threatening to take my rook. That's it. Okay, well, I will take... Maybe I should have went there first and then pushed. I yeah, I kind of regret that a little bit. But I can push here now. Um, so I will do that. I do have two minutes. Yeah, but I wonder if I should have played rook there last move. Not sure. No, wait, no, no, sorry. His, his bishop was on it, I think, so I didn't have a choice. Um, okay, so I've got a discovery. I mean, I've got a check is what I meant. 
or I could open that up. He's attacking my queen. He's attacking my rook. There's no checks or anything. Okay, so I will give it. I will give a check to start. I'm down. I've, I've. Okay, I've burned a lot of time here. I could. I could take. I'm going to take check. And I might create a discovery if he takes it. I might not take his rook. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So, oh, I dropped my rook doing that though. So I'll go with this rook. That's the better way to do it. Yeah, so I don't care about his rook. I care about his king. His king is naked. Now, unfortunately, my queen can't really infiltrate unless I can somehow get here. So this doesn't really work because he just stops. But if, yeah, there we go. Queen here right away. Um, or I could take his rook. The problem with this is he just comes here. Okay, so you know what? I am gonna take here and then then I'll bring in I'll actually bring in the other rook. Or should I should I bring in the queen right now? Ooh, no. Yeah, we go here because we're threatening mate in two. We're threatening mate in two. Look at this position. Nice. Um he might have to sack the queen or bring the knight back. Bringing the knight back is probably good. No, sorry, it doesn't work. I think he has to sack the queen here, and because I only have forty six seconds. I I like how I played this game. I mean, it was wild. But I think I made decent choices under, you know, considering the time. The time pressure. And often after I lose a game like on classical or something, um, it gives me a little bit of motivation. <laughs> Um, to just play some some carefree chess, uh, let out my anger. But yeah, sorry, I'm celebrating. That's a bad psychological thing. Game is not over, so I gotta look for moves. Um, he could sack. He could sack taking here. Um, at least I'm getting. I'm closing the the gap on the. He resigns, and that's a new personal best. He asked for a rematch, but I want to analyze the game first. New personal best on Blitz that makes up for that guy cheating against me last game. 2067 on Blitz. And that was a, that was a very wild Opusensky. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm, I think White got into trouble when he, he sacked on, on H6. Um, it was you know, obviously very scary for me, but I didn't see his follow-up. I thought I could defend, so I took it and uh, yeah. I think I was right. Um, so that was that was pretty cool. I'm gonna say that makes that makes up for the rest of the night. Whenever you set a new personal best, actually, that'll make up. That'll be good for at least a week. So even if I lose the next thirty games in a row, I always like a new personal best. It proves that I'm still improving. So always happy about that. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, let's take a look at my opponent from Mexico. Um, looks like he was 2100 a few days ago, 2112. So pretty good snipe. I mean, 2100 blitz is pretty strong. Of course, I'll say that though, because I just won, but um, yeah, I like it. And we'll just take a look at his account. Um, sorry, that's my account. 2067, I don't think the graph is updated yet. Yeah, it hasn't, but I always just like to look at it briefly. Um, so a year ago, I was 1985. So yeah, not quite 100 points in a year, but you know, the higher you go, the harder it is to improve and the slower you will improve generally. So I'm still happy with that progress. I, don't, I can't do the math on that. Is that 80 points? I think it's 80 points. So um, 80 points in a year, 
yeah, I'm happy with 80 points in a year. I'd be happy with 50 points in a year. Yeah, I'd be happy with 50 points. Even even 40 points I'd be happy with. So that's kind of cool. Top 6.9% on Blitz now. Um, way up here. Cool. And then let's look at the game. Yeah, 2067. Feels good. Feels good. I have to say. I have to say it. So, yeah, this is an Opisensky. I don't enjoy playing against this. Um, it's just it's just not a fun opening to play against. It's it's annoying. Um, H3 uh, has to, you know, H3 can't be good here. So that was a weird move by my opponent. I mean, he's rated 2066. Well, in the game, he was 2060. Um, weird that he would play h3 here, um, you know, on move eight, but maybe, I don't know. Cause I mean, I'm, uh, he had to have had this position many times before and uh, I've never, I don't think I've seen h3 before. B5 I played, it's slightly risky. It's a blitz game. So I, I took a bit of risk. You have to be a little bit careful playing B5 a little bit early because there's cases where, um, White can play knight d5. Um, and then if you take, he takes with the queen. And then after, so yeah, even like even here, you have to you have to be careful because if you take the knight, the queen can take, and then you lose the rook after a rook here, and then bishop here. Uh, in this case, you can actually escape, but generally you have to just be careful about an early b5. There's traps like that. Um, so if he, if he had Bishop E3 here, for example, and then he plays here, you gotta be careful about taking. Okay. Um, yeah, so he's, he played Bishop E3. So I don't think I, but I don't know if, if he had a free move here. I don't know if he can play here cause I, I might just be able to take on E4, but there's still issues. Like I think he could then play Bishop B6 and then he, he gets a fork here. So yeah, if I take here, so let's say I made, let's say I castled. No, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, let's say I castled and then he plays knight d5. And and if I, if I again, I can't take the knight because I lose the rook. And if I take on e4, then um, he, he may have bishop here attacking my queen and then knight here winning, winning. Actually, my rook, I would have castled in that position, right? So I'm not sure if that would work, but you got to be careful about those uh, attacking ideas by white. And that's probably why I played bishop e6, um, just so if he did potentially play knight d5, I could just take with the bishop if I had to. Um, I've got my notes. Uh, where was I here? Yeah, then he played another weird move, a3. So h3, a3, not great moves by my opponent. It's kind of strange again, because... You know, classical rapid 2060 is is um, you know it's a good rating, but on blitz, I think it's even stronger. So it's weird that he would be playing a3 h3 here, kind of weak. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if I want to go knight c6, knight bd7, but um, I didn't really know what I'm doing on c6. You know, I don't think that knight has any prospects here. So knight bd7 was the idea of, of getting it to c5. It also in it also defends e5 in case potentially I want to push d5. It defends it, both the queen and the knight are now defending e5. Um, yeah, and then he plays, yeah, he plays knight g5, um, which again, it's, it's kind of a double-edged thing when you allow this. Because the e6 square, the e6 pawn is undefended, and can become a weak point. But we are we the b5 pawn is controlling these light squares, so it's hard for him to put like a queen or a bishop here to attack it. And um, and the nice thing is, we, we, as I said before, we're controlling f5 and and e5 and uh, d5, so um, we can potentially push. And he makes another well. Okay, f3 isn't so bad here. He's, he's, he's defending e4, but then he sacks here, which, I mean, he, he just played f3. He just cut out this bishop, but even if he didn't, 
All he has is a queen here. His knight is nowhere close to coming in. His bishop is never coming in. His rooks aren't coming in. His pawns aren't coming in. Um, all he has is a queen. So it scared me at first, but I'm, you know, I'm like, he's, you know, he only has a queen. I've got all these pieces close by. So I took. Um, now, but he is starting to swarm. So I had to be, I did have to be careful. Yeah, I really, this. I burned a lot of time here because um, he did have an attack. So I decided to just, well, I, I'm, I, yeah, I decided to just let this pawn go. I guess I could have defended it with knight f8, but no, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to play a little bit more actively here. Um, I could afford to give a pawn away because I'm, I have an extra minor piece. So even though he could take here, I still just looked at it as him having, he only has two pieces in the attack. I've got, I've got four pieces defending, possibly five. So... Yeah, I'm just wondering now why um, why I didn't take. Yeah, I just. Uh... Oh yeah, I didn't take because. Um, he just he takes back with check, and his queen right now is very awkwardly placed. It's under attack. By moving here, he 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 gets two pieces still under attack, so he has to deal with that. That's why I went here. Um, it's easy to just take here, right? But he's got to deal with the, he's got a queen and a bishop under attack. So that's why I did that. And then I took, um, I, I took because he's attacking my rook. Um, but maybe I should have still attacked his queen. That might have been the better decision. He, then he's forced to come here. This was probably the better move that I see. I mean, it was a blitz game, right? I'm not really thinking much, but I think rook g7 would have been a much better move here. We're creating all of this attack, so he has to move again. This is still under attack. So I go here, um, then he, he plays something like this, and then I take, if I want, then he takes, and um, then I can push here, and that's looking really nice. So yeah, rook g7 would have been better here quite certain of that. Um, let me give a check. Yeah, just opening up that king. Yeah, here I was I was really considering what rook to e2, uh, what move? Try to figure out what move. Um, I was considering queen f2. But after rook f1, I didn't know what I'm doing. Um, and his rook is starting to get into the game. But instead of attacking the queen? What? You got to be more specific. Instead of attacking the queen. Uh, you mean here? Uh, what? Rook d e2? You mean here? I mean, it could, but it's too, it's too passive. I want to be more direct. This is, this is still, in my opinion, this is defending. I want to be attacking. Um, the rook is much better on the G file. Look at that, uh, much better on the G file. And um, if I go somewhere like this, he might, white might be able to play, like even look at this now. This knight is coming in and he's, he's there's a fork right there. Um, so yeah, I, I want to be much more aggressive than that. Yeah, and I like the decision of playing rook g rook g seven here. Um, sorry, no, it was this this position. Um, yeah, so yeah, because here I was considering just getting the queen in right away, but after rook f one, I didn't. Yeah, again, I'm not. I didn't see what I'm doing. I guess I could have played queen here potentially, but maybe no buts because I'm, I'm threatening this this. Potentially, I could have gone there, but I think the way I did it was better. I, I took one of the rooks, then I doubled up because now this is only defended twice. When he had two rooks, it would have been defended three times. And yeah, then he just resigns there respectfully, res respectful resign. But I, he didn't have any moves here. So um, 
Yeah. Uh, we'll look at it with the computer briefly. Oh man, new personal best. That's always nice. <laughs> 2067. 2067 blitz. I know I just looked at it, but I'm going to look at it again because it's <laughs> 2067 blitz. So let's see, where was I two years ago? So what is the date today? December 5th. So December, am I going the right direction? No, uh, 2000, yeah, two years ago. So two years ago, I was, drum roll, 17... 71. Wow, in two years. Oh, 300 points in two years. I'll take that. 150 points a year, I'll take that. Now, obviously, it's not, it doesn't work that way because, you know, it's easier to climb when you're 1700. But yeah, 1771 to 2067 in exactly two years. It, when you look at it, it feels weird because like two years ago, I was 1771. That's all I was, really? I, I, that's a little surprising to me. 1771. Like It seems like I was never 1771. It's like, I, I don't, I can't remember being 1700. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of cool to look at it like that. And and I, I, I don't even have data three years ago because I haven't been playing that long. I was, I, I don't know, a thousand three years ago. So I like my progress. I'm happy with my progress. Old man progress. Chugging away. I like it. Still improving. I'm not done yet. Okay, so the computer says I made no mistakes, no blunders in that crazy blitz game. That's a little bit hard to believe. Um, if I hide this, it says I made four inaccuracies, but no mistakes, no blunders. They're a little generous. A little generous there, I would say. Um, Eat chips? Yeah, I'm doing Devoretsky's Endgame Manual. That's the next big project. A 10 year, <laughs> a 10 year, uh, thoughts on the woodpecker. I actually just made a video today. I didn't upload it yet. I'll probably publish it in two days from now. I just did an update to, so I've done 211 hours in woodpecker. I, I calculated it today. Exactly 211 hours, um, which is a lot. <laughs> But I'm not done Woodpecker yet. Probably probably going to put in another 100, 150 hours, I would say, maybe. I'm thinking I might actually tackle the advanced. And then, like, maybe. I was thinking maybe I will do the advanced as well. And then I will do the whole full Woodpecker. Maybe get the whole Woodpecker done in six hours. And then do a video of that where I just do it nonstop for six hours. Then I will have considered it conquered and mastered, then I will do Devoretsky's Endgame Manual, which is gonna not be a fun ride. Okay, sorry, so let's just, yeah, so the Opusensky here. Yeah, so we break theory, but um, yeah, so B5 computer lag. No, I'm happy that I played a 29 move game. I played a full blitz game against a 2060 without a single mistake. Um, yeah, that's all fine. So, I mean, I'm not even going to spend too much time on these moves. Computer, oh, computer doesn't really like knight c5 so much, though. What's knight b6? Which is, yeah, knight b6 is good too. Um, the reason it doesn't really like knight c5 so much is apparently, well, it's two reasons. It's knight g5, which is what he played, and knight d5.
so knight d5, yeah, is, is a simple fork. So we have to give up the bishop, but that bishop is not so great anyways. Then after e takes, I mean, black is still fine here, but um, wait, did I follow that out correctly? Yeah, I did. So um, computer still really likes... Okay, it's not even it's not even a bad move. It likes knight c5. It just likes knight b6 more. So nothing wrong with knight c5, but apparently knight b6 is just even more accurate. Excuse me. And um, yeah, this is just a straight up blunder. You can see the you can see on the screen there. That was like that's why I won the game. Just an unsound sacrifice. Um, Look at it from White's point of view. I mean, yeah, he's really, I mean, you got to calculate a way that you're going to get something out of this instead of just taking. Um, I almost didn't take, though. I was close to not taking, but I just, I sat back and tried to look at it objectively. I'm like, he all he has is a queen. All he has is a queen, so. Yeah, and then it likes the way I played. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm going to end it there just because I want to end up.